Hey everyone. So today what we're going to do is test out these gluten-free flours, see how much water we have to add to make it at each of the stages that I did for the gluten flours, and then we can see how close each of the gluten-free flours is to the gluten flours by the amount of water that they each absorb. This is going to help us a lot figure out which one is best in which recipe. All right, let's jump into it. Golf Red Mill has a couple of different all-purpose flour blends and the one that I was testing here today was the one-to-one um, -one flour. Now that's one-to-one -one flour is the, the rice-based one, not the garbanzo flour-based one. I will do that one separately and we'll discuss that one separately because it is a whole different beast. Okay, so the Bob's Red Mill, I was actually shocked when I went back and I looked at the data and I could compare it to all of the different flours that contain gluten, I was pretty impressed. So it was pretty far off on the dry weight. So when we took that weight of the flour before adding any of the water, it was 148 grams. This is significantly lower than any of the gluten containing flours. Um, the lowest of them being like cake flour and pastry flour. Uh, but those were still 30 to 40 grams more for a cup. Um, and then the heavier ones went as high as 230 grams. Um, so we're looking around 200 grams per cup for the gluten flours. And we're looking at 140, it's about 150 grams for a cup of the Bob Red Mill one-to-one -one gluten free flour. Now, when we looked at adding the crumbles, so we just wanted to add enough water to it so that we got like a crumbly texture where we could, um, I call it kind of like a sand. So where you can pick it up, hold it, and then you put it in your hand and you touch it and it falls apart. That was the texture I was looking for. And to get that for the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one gluten-free flour, I needed to add 59 grams of water for any of the gluten flours, the most I had to add was 31 grams and as little as five for some others. The 31 grams was in the whole wheat, so that's where it is the closest to, but still significantly far off at almost twice the amount of water that we had to add for Bob's Red Mill one to one versus the whole wheat. And then when we look at the dough, we had to do 121 grams of water to get it to come together and make a dough ball. And the most that the gluten flours needed to do that was 89 grams, and that was for the semolina or 87 for the whole wheat. So 121 versus the 89. That's pretty significant, but we're getting closer here. So if you're looking at using the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one gluten free flour to replace any flours in a gluten recipe, you need to make sure that you are adding more water or more liquid of some type, depending on what your recipe is. But Here's something that's very interesting is that when we go and look at the thick batter to like a cake batter or a thin batter like a pancake, um, we're very close here to all-purpose flour. 
which of course is what most recipes are going to call for. So the Bob's Red Milk came in at 161 grams to get to the thick batter, where the all-purpose was 179. So risking doing math here on camera, I think about 18 grams, so it's not very far off at all. But you might need to hold back on that liquid a little bit when you're making this batter. And then to make the thin batter, the all-purpose needed 214, Bob's Red Mill 206. So we are very, very close here. So it's eight grams different, very minimal here. So if you are looking at using a recipe that calls for all-purpose flour, Bob's Red Mill is not too far off. And that would be a really good one, it seems like, to use as far as the water absorption goes. Now I am planning on doing all kinds of testing of these flowers, trying them out in all kinds of different recipes. So don't forget to stick around and take a look at that.